an honor and a privilege to introduce today's plenary speaker, Frances E. Allen. Like many women of her generation, Fran Allen started out her career with a degree in education, in her case, from Albany State Teachers College back in 1957. She then went on to earn a master's degree in mathematics at the University of Michigan, and at that point, IBM had the good sense to recruit her to join their team. At IBM, Fran quickly became a pioneer in the field of compilers and also in high-performance computing. She is widely recognized for her fundamental work in the theory of program optimization and also for her early leadership of the Parallel Translations Project. Fran has won many significant awards for her work over the years. Among them, she is an IBM Fellow, which is an extremely prestigious award at IBM. And in 2007, the Association of Computing Machinery announced that Fran Allen was the recipient of the Turing Award, which is the highest honor for a computer science researcher in our field. And she is the first woman to win this award. Fran has also distinguished herself in service contributions to our community and particularly in supporting women. She spent many years as a mentor through IBM's mentor program. In 2000, she herself became the first recipient of the Fran Allen Women in Technology Mentoring Award. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to Fran Allen, our plenary speaker today. I'm so delighted to be here, and uh, I'm assuming the slides will come up. I have so much to tell you. We've got a lot of work to do this morning. I'm going to uh, make a quite a few suggestions, and I'm going to tell you about my own career. And uh, oh, what is this? I need some technology help. <laughs> okay, I, I, I'm going to talk, talk about really what it means to me, has meant to me, to win the Turing Award a great deal, uh, and, and also to comment on the fact that the times they are are changing uh, for computer science and for our, the, and, uh, the, whole, the whole impact that computing has had on our field and on every other field and, and on people around the world. So, as I said, we've got work to do this morning, so let's get with it if I get the technology worked out here. Next. Okay. Uh, so change is happening. And uh, as everyone knows, last year I won the Turing Award, and I just thought I would point out that I am the first woman since the award uh, to, to, was initiated in, by uh, ACM in 1966, and there have been a total of 54 people re have received it. Now, I am deeply honored by that, but also deeply concerned. And I think we, we all should be very deeply concerned that more of the women in our field are not receiving, in my opinion, the awards uh, that they deserve. And anyway, before I get into my rants on some of that, and I don't, well, really will try not to be a, do a rant, uh, I do want to talk about uh, my, uh, the, my uh, a number of things. There's a, there's a list of what I'm gonna talk about. Uh, and, but I also want to, uh, We'll, we'll start, I'm going to, since Anne has given such a nice introduction about uh, my back, background before I joined IBM, with how I joined IBM. Uh, it, IBM had a recruiting brochure. <laughs> this, in 1957, 
And I had, didn't see it at the time when I was recruited well, at the University of Michigan finishing up my master's degree in mathematics, but uh, it, 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 I, I came across this quite a few years later, and I'm certain, or it's likely, that I was recruited uh, as, as a result of uh, IBM's expanding uh, in uh, its needing many people at that time and looking for women. It's always had a, had a great history of, of hiring women. And then, and, and, um, and other minorities, of course, going way, way back. Uh, and, 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 and this was, I want to point out, well before computer science. When I, uh, computer science didn't exist when I started in 57, and it didn't come into existence until uh, at least 10 years later. So, and I'm going to come back to that point at, at, at some stage. So, the first, um, um, the first project after I joined IBM, uh, well, since I'd been a high school math teacher for a while, that, uh, and I joined as a programmer, they decided, that the, my management decided that I should teach the new Fortran language, uh, and, uh, and, and, um, which was, had come out a few months before I uh, joined. And, the, and they were going to issue an edict that everybody, all the scientists in IBM Research were going to have to use this language uh, and, and, um, uh, and give up on using assembly language. Well, they were, I, and they had to take a course. <laughs> so, and I was the teacher of the course, and I had to learn Fortran and teach this unhappy class of, of scientists <laughs> how to use it. <laughs> well, the, the nut of it was, is that I, uh, uh, it, it, Bought, really fell in, it fell, uh, uh, was enamored with the whole idea of using a high, high level language. Everybody, uh, and adopted, and I didn't realize I'd done it at the time, but over the years I've suddenly, I realized I adopted the goals that John Backus had set in, in establishing Fortran to, for user productivity, and, and uh, problem performance. And so that became the goals of my entire uh, uh, career uh, in, in high performance computing and in compilers and, lang and computer languages for high performance computing. So I, there's a, some wonderful stories that go with that, but I wanna move on quickly through, he through this uh, and talk about my uh, next project which, um, uh, which was Stretch, a Stretch uh, project by, and it was at, again at IBM. You're gonna look, get some IBM history here, some early history that's not very well known. And in fact, because it isn't very well known, uh, the, 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 uh, the, certainly the Stretch is not well known uh, for some reason. Um, well, uh, I'll tell a little bit about that. But we had a, a, a um, there was the Computer History Museum two or three weeks ago had an event uh, in which Fre uh, Fred Brooks and I, uh, who Fred was associated with the, um, with the Stretch Project, uh, and, and I was associated with the Stretch Project, and, and, and uh, one other person, Howard Kolsky, uh, did a t sort of a town hall meeting on the, the, that particular project. Its goal was, and this was set by the president of the company, to be 100 times faster than any other, uh, anything that existed. Uh, it was actually the first one was going to be, was built for Los Alamos, and, um, and it became, uh, and it, it, it became, and it, the computing at that time was still extremely primitive, and computers were primitive. Um, and the and people it was it, it was a it, and stretch was absolutely the right word for it, um, and I pointed out I point out on the second line a a problem that the people uh, the designers recognized actually in 1955 that memory uh, access time was going to be the, their biggest challenge. It's still our biggest challenge in computing. We don't know how to get the data to the computation. And, and, 
and 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 it's still uh, there's still been caches, all kinds of things since then, and it's still still a huge huge problem. Um, the so the total project was an involved an extraordinary piece of hardware and some extraordinary compiler to go with it, and I was part of the compiler uh, activity, and uh, but. In addition to the, the stretch part, there was an, a, another attachment bigger than stretch and a totally different machine for the National Security Agency, and I was involved with that also. The, not with the, the hardware at, at all, but with, the, with um, building uh, the compiler for it and the comp a language for it. That is, is still one of the most, is still would be a, outside of the base technology, a, an amazing machine today. It was a machine that ha was hosted by Stretch. It had a streaming data computational model. It was, uh, it was one of a kind. Um, it, the, the, it had eight instructions with unbounded execution times. And of course, the basic what was 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 uh, basic purpose of the machine was to do code breaking uh, from uh, on data collected up on listening stations around the world. And, uh, and it was so, and, and so, and, the, and there was another part to it I don't mention here, was where the data was stored, which was an integral part of the, the, the computational units. And, and it was the only system that has ever been built that had perfectly balanced I.O. Uh, memory and, uh, com and computational speeds. So, data, so thousands of, uh, hundreds of thousands of bytes of data could flow through and be analyzed looking for patterns. Of course, that's what code, code breaking is, is largely about, looking for patterns and accumulating data and, um, uh, on, uh, on the, um, as a result of the harvest section. They were one of the great designers uh, of that and Fred and Harwood and I agreed at the at the um, at the uh, computer history museum event that the greatest designer on the whole system of stretch and harvest was Jim Promarine, who's still alive. He came he was came to IBM after working with John von Neumann on John von Neumann's computer. He was a lead engineer there, and 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 he's. And so, and we have, we've, he has not been pr properly recognized over the years. And in thinking about Jim, uh, I realize that there are many, many others that have not been uh, appropriately recognized over the year for their work. Now, in his case, he, a lot of his work was, was top secret. Some of it was very, very early. And, uh, but he still, uh, to this day, is, is me working with people on, uh, on various problems related to this, these kinds of systems. Um, my role was, uh, with, was the, again, the compiler, I'll show you a picture of it in a minute, uh, was, but also a language called the alpha language for the code breakers to use. Uh, and, and, it, and it was a perfect match for, again, <laughs> be, uh, for, for this very special purpose machine uh, and in that it could, could um, the code breakers could write their code very clearly, very succinctly, their algorithms, uh, and have it mapped to the machine, this very special machine, and in a, in, in, in a very short uh, few lines of code. Uh, I was uh, recently in an earth, or uh, uh, check, looked to see how many lines of code would it take to do a DNA mapping if one had the, the, the system and had the alpha language, and it was about 15 to do a total DNA mapping. Now, we don't have languages like that anymore, or, or, uh, and, and we, or not many of them, that are so high level uh, and, and, and so very special purpose. As we move forward from where, I'm going to, from where we are and what our next steps have to be, and I'll talk about that a little bit, is is the is this we're going to have to be th rethinking uh, a, a lot of how we do computing to these days, and it's uh, we're at a tipping point in 
in, in the computing field. And a lot of changes are going to be happening. I'll get to that. But, but it's going back to looking at something like this. It's clear we could, could can, can rethink some of the lessons that were learned at that time and in, the, in this very particularly bold uh, uh, project. Here's the compiler we built then. Uh, and uh, it was, um, it, it's still uh, the pattern of this compiler, having multi to being able to take multiple ver source languages, very different source languages, Fortran, uh, a, 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 um, a, bi a business language, COBOL was popular. Uh, it, it was sort of like COBOL. And, and the alpha language, which was the, the, the language from, that the agency wanted, and then uh, doing, a, doing a formal analysis, going down to an intermediate form, uh, going through optimization and transformations, and then uh, on, on, uh, on an intermediate form that rep could represent all of the source languages, and then going mapping those to the different two different target machines. IBM's um, product compiler today, the family of Excel compilers, is looks like this in some sense. And, and it can map, it can take all of the product languages that IBM uh, has for its customers to all of the machines that IBM has to its customers through a system that looks sort of like this in the intermediate forms. So what was the, were the outcomes of this project? Well, it didn't, it didn't reach it, the stretch didn't reach its 100 times goal. The, uh, I'm, I'm having a look at my own slides because I, I didn't, uh, I thought I'd have my own computer here. <laughs> they took it away. <laughs> um, so, uh, but the, the president of the company, the founder in the, uh, Tom Watson, was very, had announced a hundred times goal on this on this project, and then he had to apologize to the world. Uh, and uh, and in fact, the Fortran compiler, which should have been the simplest part of it, was was one was also failed in some in in, in terms of uh, how it, it, for an, another customer, it took uh, it, this was a for weather forecasting. It took 18 hours to do a 24-hour forecast. <laughs> you know, it was it, it was both the machine was was not as fast as it was supposed to be, and the compiler was 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 not as fast as it didn't produce code as good code as it was supposed to. But we were inventing everything, uh, and it was a group of very young people uh, that and no experience. And there wasn't any experience to be had anyway. We wouldn't have taken on this project, I think, if we knew what we were, <laughs> what we did, didn't know. <laughs> I might say, as far as the, the, as the compiler was concerned and, and, the, and the project itself, there were many women involved. Uh, and uh, there were three, um, four of us were first line managers on the compiler, and three of us were women. At, and this is in, late 50s. So, it, but computer science didn't exist yet. <laughs> it's not computer science's fault per se, but, but I, I, I did w make a link later on which had to do with how the professionalism of the field uh, evolved over the years as to wh why we had some problems with men. Anyway, um, so, uh, this is, uh, you see a comment there by Dag Spicer from the Computer History Museum. They have a, have a one of the machines, the, the uh, stretch there, harvest, disappeared into Fort Meade. Uh, I spent, I was, I was at Fort Meade for a year uh, and actually was there in the basement at the, when the, at, during the um, Cuban Missile crisis. It was a, a marvelous and very interesting, very scary experience. And, um, and, I, and I wrote, actually, and I thought I would be spending my, the rest of my career there because I was supposed to write the, the acceptance test code and it had to, was to uh, do automatic ab abstraction of articles. And, um, and 
and I didn't, so I, I, I wrote up in alpha on an automatic abstractor, and I never thought to be able to abstract Time Magazine ar articles, but it did the second time, and I, I got, got to go home. <laughs> but I was amazed about, about that. Okay, um, just going quickly. The next project was, it was um, that I was involved with, though 360 came along in here too, uh, as far as IBM history is concerned, also was to build, uh, those of us that were disappointed and that we didn't really succeed on stretch, that we would, would to build the fastest machine in the world again. And, uh, and so we, we did that, but did, did, joined a project to do that. We didn't do it. Uh, it was canceled. <laughs> so, uh, and, and this time we, we had moved to California. We were in Silicon Valley uh, before Silicon Valley was there. And, uh, and here, in or we, we moved there in order to get away from the Armonk, the headquarters for, of IBM. <laughs> and they were distracted by what was going on with the 360, another big project, the 360 system. So, so this, we got a, a long ways and did build a, a, an experimental compiler because we didn't know what the machine would look like, so we built the, the ex experimental compiler to be language independent and machine independent. It was a carry forward of the, of the very first piece of work we had. And, um, and I, put, I had John Cox's picture up there. He was a, an earlier Turing Award winner, and uh, this was his favorite project. Uh, but unfor and, uh, and he was one of the uh, drivers of the engineering, just absolutely amazing man. Um, I've had the good luck all through my career of working with some really, truly great people, uh, and that's been very fortunate. But there weren't really any women on that project. It was interesting that with that seemed to, in, the, in that period of, of the 60s, started to fall off. Um, so anyway, and I, what I then, when this collapsed um, uh, in, Sil uh, in, in Silicon Valley, uh, then I, um, uh, and everybody left to go every which way, and I actually stayed on for a while and tried to get the compiler embedded in, in uh, some work that Gene Omdahl, I worked for Gene Omdahl, you know, and it was doing and tried to get that, but that didn't, didn't pan out. Um, so I took a sabbatical at, at uh, NYU. And my career has had, always had a circle of, of research, going to product then, moving with, often with the research out to product, and then often with doing, spending uh, doing a, a sabbatical or some period of time where I look again at, the, um, at what the research issues are. And going to product is a great way to find out what the research issues should be. <laughs> you spend all your time not solving interesting problems, but trying to sh meet a deadline. And uh, you stack up uh, new interesting areas to explore. So, um, so I spent a period, and, and then I came a period kind of getting, getting my things back together again, doing a lot of, of product work, compiler work, addition, adding on, writing some papers. And, um, and then uh, IB, IBM, was, which was very late in getting into parallelism, uh, asked me to put together a compiler group to look at autom automatic parallelism. And, and that, Turned out to be one of the one of the fun, most fun recent projects I had. I went to the, visited the University of Illinois and the universities where great com parallel work was going on, and uh, and NYU and some other places, and hired a lot of young people, and uh, and we put together a team that for f ten or fifteen years just poured out papers and and and. and compiler technologies and built, built pieces of it and every, everything. Uh, I really, really, really enjoyed th that whole era. Now I skipped over what, I hap what happened when I first came back to research after this kind of uh, 
round trip from to to the to the west coast, um, and I and I found a a glass ceiling, um, and it it has taken me quite a long time to understand why the environment had changed, and and I am convinced. And everyone I speak to is guesses this, that is the same reason. That guesses that what I believe is that computer science emerged as a science, as a profession, as a and as a, 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 a um, uh, with all the ta the the requirements on on what professional standards professional standards. And, and requirements of, of, of what one needed to know to get a job in the field. And m most of the computer science departments in the mid-60s emerged out of the engineering schools, which were almost all men. Uh, and, those, and the engineering schools had the, had the courses and where, that the students had to, took, uh, and the companies then we're hiring people that satisfied criteria that didn't exist early on when com uh, when computer science I'm using it, as it d didn't uh, didn't exist. I mean, people were in early earlier. Uh, anyone uh, f from uh, who was had good marks and bright and and, <laughs> and eager, I guess, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, could get a a, a job. And uh, they didn't have to be mathematicians or scientists. They, they could be English majors or, or whatever. And uh, because the field was growing and there were no cr credentials had been established. So and in, in that period then, um, credentials were established. And by the early 70s, um, it, things had really changed for women, uh, at least in my environment and every, in most other uh, groups that I've talked to about this theory, I, is, is, I absolutely agree that that was where there was a significant shift. Okay, moving forward. Having finished uh, with, I retired, and by the way, I didn't mention that, <laughs> and then it, and after 45 years, and then after 50 years of being associated with the field, I received the Turing Award, and that my life changed. <laughs> I was still uh, had act. <laughs> and I want to tell you what how what it what it was like to to get a, a, the fo a phone call uh, uh, from Susan Bankshi. Actually, she was chair of the of the Turing Award committee, and this was in January or February uh, of, of two thousand and seven. Uh, and, and, and to tell me that, that I had, was receiving the award, which, which was stunning. And then I, of course, got, got calls from every other person on the committee. Uh, but I was warned that I couldn't talk about it for two or three months. This was a, ACM's, <laughs> uh, needed, and IBM needed to get their, 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 uh, the PR together. <laughs> And and I was kind of I was kind of happy that it, there was a delay in that in that time, because I had time to think about what this meant to me. Um, and and in the first hour of of hearing the uh, of hearing the news, I was home alone and kind of I just kind of paced around, and talked to my cat, and <laughs> said, <laughs> and 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 realized that one of the things. Uh, there were two things that came. I kept. What, am I, what in the world am I going to talk about? <laughs> because Turing Award people and, and Jim Gray, uh, uh, who uh, is, was a former winner, and I had, he talked with me that week. That that following weekend was the weekend that he disappeared, um, and very sadly. Uh, but but he said. Uh, well, you're going to be on everybody's A-list, so you better get started thinking about what you're going to say. Um, but the other thing that ke I kept coming back to was the fact that, the w that, that so many women that I knew 
uh, that I'd worked with and w were deserving of so much more recognition than they had ever gotten in their careers. And it's true of men too, of course, like Jim Pomerain. But it, it really uh, made me feel that part of what I wanted to do was to try and, and change that, change the, the way we recognize people and increase the recognitions uh, I now I'm on a committee in Nita Borg, uh, for, uh, in the Nita Borg with Katie Dickinson that Katie, Katie Dickinson heads, in, in try, trying to look in trying to to focus on uh, on awards for women, and uh, I spend quite a lot of time not so much on that committee but on on, on make, thinking about oh we've got to nominate so and so and do something about this that's it. and stimulate those awards. And I think that I hope, just like mentoring, and um, uh, is, this is an extremely important task for all, for all of us. And it's for both men and women. It's, uh, equity is here, it, we, it, it's important. But I think there's been a little, some equity lacking <laughs> for some of the people. Um, OK. okay. Um, so what I'm going to do now is talk about, and I'm going to try to be, a, 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 I'll be quick about the next subject, is what did I decide I was going to talk about. I have a little something to say about wither computer science, uh, and, and the last one is where, is, where of course, is, have all the women gone? Because where they're not, well, they're here. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so, uh, but that, and that is great. This is just, just a, a really uplifting feeling. So I'm going to go very quickly uh, through uh, some, an exciting new uh, problem, and, and, uh, and, um, which is going to, is, is both is an opportunity for a lot of people, and a lot of women have gotten involved with it, and it's new, and well, let me just tell you what it is. <laughs> this is what the, the performance the, the, the performance of computing is not going to stay on the curve that is shown up there. This, 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 you can't see, read this graph from where you are, but this goes back to the fast, each, each dot on there is the fastest computer of that year, starting with uh, ENIAC, you know, very, way down in the corner in, um, in uh, two, um, whenever it was, uh, 1944, I guess. Uh, and going up to the blue jean and, and uh, the fastest computers that are on, kept list are kept on now. But there's that curve, which is Moore's Law, uh, is, which has been very steady and going, doing well in the high performance field. But what is happening is that the drivers of this, the basic core technologies, are in trouble. So, and 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 and, and uh, I, I'm not. This is not my specialty, but uh, some people here would know a lot know a lot more about it. So, but it's in trouble. <laughs> um, and it's it's the 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 performance futures are have fallen off, and it and f fell off about 19 uh, 2002 or three. Um, I was talking with Greg Papadopoulos this morning and uh, trying to pin him down on just when it had happened, but any new, <laughs> close, close enough. So, so, but that is creating a serious gap in the expectations uh, of, 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 this, of this area. And also the problems with heat and energy, and uh, I'm, that's, not, uh, that's a separate problem, but due to the same root cause of uh, miniaturization. Um, and so now what's the solution? Well, the solution is to move to do have explicit parallelism. Back to a, a, a field I know a bit about. <laughs> and ha do it in software. Uh, and, and move then have what's on the chip, the actual technology, be much sim the, 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 the parts be much simpler, much smaller, much cooler, and 
put all the work of, uh, that they used to do in terms of having capabilities on each of those, uh, on those chips, lots of heavy duty capabilities in the transistors on, on these chips, uh, onto the, the, the code that's produced by software. Um, so uh, that's what they've done, is given us a tool <laughs> which, with a lot of parallelism, but it's up to us in software to figure out how to use it. Uh, and, the, and, and this is a comment on the parallelism. And in fact, we cannot, there is, without a huge amount of more work, uh, we're not in a position uh, to in, either in software or to ask the users to do it. Architectures, the architectures upon which all of these gadgets are based and which are, are to the target of all of, of, uh, of, um, uh, of um, all of the software that runs is, is, is changing as rapidly as I have ever, ever seen it. And it's just getting started. And th this is going to affect everything from the very high performance computing, probably maybe even less up there, uh, then it is, uh, it, but it's going to affect the handhelds and the everything. So, so we're at a at a at a, at a fairly fragile crux point in in computing. Some basic assumptions we've been making about computing for for for, for a long time for sixty years, and the software is not in position to help to do it, and neither can the users grapple with all of these mirrored architectures that are, that are going to emerge at a very steady pace. So John Hennessy, the president of Stanford and the Hennessy, of the Hennessy Patterson books, uh, had said, has said that the biggest, it's the biggest problem computer science has ever faced. And I absolutely agree with him. I'm not sure that there's any disagreement on that, top, that statement. I see it as also the biggest opportunity we're going to get to, to make some very nice advances in compilers and languages and, 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 and in parallelism. But it's going to mean new languages, new compilers, new systems, uh, and it's not going to happen over, overnight. The, uh, the fortunately, the community recognizes all of that, and the community, I think, itself, from, from, from various companies and, um, uh, and, um, and, and, and certainly uh, and universities are all coming together and, and, and cooperating on different ideas and aspects of this, uh, of this issue. It's really a time, uh, in, 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 it's, a, it's, a, it's a time of change for our field and a time when I think uh, since there are already quite a few women in, the, in working on this, on aspects of this problem, uh, that it's going to be an opportunity for, for the women to play major roles, partly because they're, they're such good community builders and, and, uh, and uh, communicators. And I won't go down that why, but they're, they're, it really is happening in every, in every uh, corner of our field. I've been so um, so as I said, computer, computer science is is the change is happening, and I, I, the changing in computing. This is a little sidebar. I I really have been un, unhappy about computer science, but I, I'm really not in the middle of the issues of education in computer science, of the curriculum, of of how. But it distresses me that that I see less and less interesting work being done in my own field, conference, piles of papers and conference after conference, and not I don't find much new happening of that are that and but I did and so I've been distressed about the field itself, and I heard Dick Carp, who is a great one of the great theorists theorists in the field. Um, also a Turing Award winner, he's at Berkeley, um, say in a talk a, a couple of weeks ago uh, that, that computer science, and I, I'll read it, 
the is 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 the out is the, is uh, is placing itself at the center of scientific discourse and exchange of ideas, and this is only the beginning. He also says the algorithmic world, which is part of it, our computer science, is changing mathematical, natural, social, and life sciences. So I, I think Dick, and Dick had a wonderful talk, um, and I think that this is absolutely great news from one of our great thinkers. So it means change is, is happening at a, in a very fundamental way. So switching now to the more of, the, of where we're going, the women's issues. Um, my hopes, this is first of all my hopes for the future. I'd like to see a new generation of women experience the excitement I feel for the whole my field. I and I, I would really like women to stay in technology, stay in in, in the science side. Uh, it's it's terrific when they become great leaders, and but not all women are destined to do that. It's great when you can can, but it's, there's a happiness about being in in a, a joy that I find every day in the field that I specialized in for, for the, the last 50 years. And, and I ex get excited by new ideas I, and, and, and this, the new opportunities and uh, discouraged sometimes, of course, uh, but it's, it, it, it's, it's a great feeling to be part, and, and it'll go on the rest of my life, I'm sure, <laughs> as long as I have my, <laughs> my mind. <laughs> One always starts to worry. <laughs> um, and, I, and I'd like to see women creating the workplace that meets their needs, their individual needs. We're at a point where we have so much wonderful technology for communicating and, 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 and uh, sharing, and it's global. And we're sharing, and, and a global company like IBM has projects with, where the individuals or people on the projects are work uh, on components of the project around the world. There's an expert in, 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 in Bangladesh, that person is part of the project and so forth. So, and, and, and the, well, you know the whole globalization issue, it's very, it's adding a great deal to the diversity of our ideas and to the benefits that we derive from it. And the second, the last, third one is I'd like to see computer science become a core science. This was inspired by Dick's remarks and at the British Computer Society last uh, um, workshop on visions in computing uh, and it last, uh, last week. And I'd also like to see uh, Anita's goal happen. She, she, her, she had a goal for us to have 50 50 50 percent women in the workplace by 2020. And I remember her, Nina and I, Anita had been a student of mine at NYU, and I was the only, uh, when I had a, had a compiler course at NYU, and um, was teaching, uh, and and uh, she is the, uh, and I was the only woman at, uh, in 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 uh, what was a professor at, of hers in graduate school, and we and we kept up a, a, a relationship over the years. And I remember one very rainy night. I was at work late, and I was in a terribly grumpy mood about a lot of things. And 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 the phone rings, and it's Anita, and she said. What do you think about 50-50 in 2020? <laughs> and I said, oh, Nita, we can't possibly do it. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's 2000 something or other. <laughs> it's impossible, it's impossible. <laughs> Look at the, what's going on in the graduate schools and the, everywhere, it's, it, we can't do that. And so I really poured cold water on it. <laughs> and then I said, uh, and then she, she said, oh, well. <laughs> and then she, and then she, um, and then she said, well, 
that's uh, maybe mine. And she said goodbye, Grant. And so about half, so I really started to think about it. And about half an hour later, I called her up and I said, yes. <laughs> she was great for putting out grand challenges for all of us. And, and it was, uh, and I, it would be like, it would, and um, even the ones, those of us who would get cold feet once in a while. And certainly want to have many, many more women and men uh, have the experience, but especially women have the experience of, uh, of winning an award as I have done. And I'd like to spend just a little bit on the uh, remembering a few great women. Um, one was, of course, and there are, there are many, 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 and I, this is, <laughs> I would be, be in real trouble if I tried to make a list. <laughs> um, but Anita is certainly one of them. And I, when I was in England a couple of weeks ago, I visited Bletchley Park, which is, is the, was the code-breaking uh, organization or site for the British during World War II. Uh, and it's a museum that's in desperate need of funding. And uh, I've been, f for a while, have been a, a member, long distance member of the museum. But I had not ever, because of my interest in uh, my NSA, NSA interest, um, but I had not ever visited it. So, they, so uh, uh, and uh, it's, Go there if you if you possibly can, and look at their look at their website. This is where Turing worked and lived, uh, and uh, did that marvelous mathematics and and uh, insights. Also, I discovered there were thousands of of women there, Wrens, they were called. Uh, who, who were in the service and had been drafted to, to monitor the, the, the German uh, uh, um, communications. And of course, there was the Enigma, if you've heard of that machine, was code breaking, it was one of the German machine, and, and the British had their own. So I'll show you one picture about that in, in the next slide. Uh, then there's the the ENIAC computer, which was came net, was was being built here in the United States. It was the first, and, and by the way, the one at Bletchley Park was was is though it was it's been secret for a long time, was the first uh, stored program machine. Not ENIAC was came a year later, so technically it was. Not first, but it doesn't matter. It was they were essentially built kind of simultaneously, and and Jean Batek, who was one of the computers on that project, is is being awarded uh, a get, being recognized by the Computer History Museum uh, next week as a fellow of the Computer History Museum. She's still alive and feisty, uh, and she did she was. So the programmers were called computers at that time, or on that project at least. I'd also the, like to think about all the many, as I did when I received the award, the many people. One was particularly a friend, Betty McDonough, who was on the early days of a stretch and, 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 and built the, uh, the very first multi-programming, multitasking uh, interface machine part as part of the, the memory latency problem solving it. And never, and it was, the, the work was just stolen from her. Absolutely <laughs> terrible. So, but that's the way it happens. Yeah, so. And this is the, the, the picture of the, of um, the Wrens working on the, their, on the Colossus machine. That's one of the machines that they had at Black, Bletchy, Bletchy Park. Uh, for for years, three hour, three shifts a day, these people would would uh, work, and not a, a never was the 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 um, the information leaked out of that uh, leaked from leaked. It was just amazing, unbelievable. 
So I want to thank all of you. Uh, and, and I would like, uh, my final word, I guess, is that women's work should not be top secret, like the Wren's work and the people, all of the Jim Pomeranes work. But Jim, but, and, it, and, and uh, we're ready to celebrate. We have a reason to celebrate because we have not only, we, we have more and more women, great women entering our field now. Uh, I don't know where they're coming from <laughs> because we do have a problem in computer science, but, and computer science is changing, but I really am excited about these times and, uh, and it's time for a celebration. And here's a great uh, watercolor that, uh, picture of a watercolor uh, that Maria Klawe did uh, at a, attend, while she was attending a meeting. <laughs> so thank you very much and good luck. <laughs>